Hello, I'm Rosella and welcome to my craft room this afternoon and today I'm going to make this super handy um, picnic messenger bag mat. Picnic bag messenger bag. Any of those words in any order but let me show you what it is. So I've used poppers to hold it all together. You've got a little bag there that you're going to fit your picnic in. You're going to get a drink in there. <laughs> the dog's just run around because he thinks he's getting crisps again. Oh, you're not bows. And then when you're ready to sit down on your walk, you can then unpop your picnic mat, nice and padded so you can sit on that. We've also got a little zip in the flap as well so that you can keep your valuables in there whilst you're out for a walk as well. And then it just folds back up, pops back together. And I think it looks really super stylish. So I do hope you enjoy making it. Let's begin by making the strap. So my fabric is four inches wide and about 44 inches long. We're just making the one strap that's gonna go all the way around. I've put a little bit of iron on stiffener interfacing on the inside, as you can see. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna iron quarter, quarter of an inch, no, three eighths of an inch down one side, same down the other, fold it in half and bring them to meet so that then and I'm just going to machine stitch all the way down both edges actually just to give a really nice neat flat finish. And there we have it. To be fair, it's about as straight as a dog's hand leg, but it's a strap at the end of the day. It's nice and sturdy, but it's quite soft. So when it's going over your shoulder, it's going to be comfortable as well. Now we're going to prepare our outer body and our lining. So I've got the same green spots for the outer body and I've just got a sort of a pale um, turquoise blue for the lining, a plain. And the size of these is, let me tell you, um, 17 and three quarter inches by 20 and a quarter ish if you're using fat quarters you're going to need a couple of fat quarters of your outer fabric so you've got the outer fabric and the flap and then one the lining fabric and that might um, tell you exactly what size it's going to be anyway so i've got that then what i'm going to do is i'm going to attach some fusible fleece so i've just made it a quarter of an inch smaller on each side just so that we don't get involved in seam allowances on that and i'm going to attach that to my lining fabric now so there's my fusible fleece onto my lining fabric and then that's my outer fabric i'm just going to pop those out of the way temporarily whilst we now prepare the flap the, the flap over now i've got a zip on the inside of mine so let me tell you the sizes of the fabric that i've got I've got it written down bear with pocket okay 11 and three quarter inches by 10 inches and i've got two pieces of fabric at that size one of them i've put into facing on to give it a little bit of a stiffener there and then what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to put them wrong sides together and I'm going to use bonder web to attach those. So bonder web, the one that's like double star, double double sided, double sided sticky. So you've got paper on one side, you peel off and iron it on, so that then that in effect becomes one piece of fabric. So that's the one part. Now the next part, and again I've got one layer of interfacing, is going to be ten inches again, but this time it's about six and a quarter. And I'm going to bond a web those two together also. And then what I'm going to do, <laughs> what didn't I do this different colour to make it easy? I'm going to attach my zip to one piece. And then I'm going to fold over the other piece to meet that. So I'm just going to go away and bond a web and I'll come back to you. So I've now got two pieces of fabric attached together with um, actually what turned out to be a bit of a patchwork of bonder web because I'd run out so uh, it's all little pieces but that's okay it still does the same job and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my zip between one of the large pieces and one of the small pieces and what it is the only small piece and large piece isn't it now so my zip's going to go in there but I don't want my zip right to the end 
I'm actually going to set it in um, an inch and a half from either side. So if I've got a an erasable pen, that's heat erasable. Oh, I don't know whether that'll show up. I oh, will try it. And just measure one and a half inches from each end. And that's where my zip's going to go. And then the same from this side, one and a half inches. So I've got some little marks there. If we can see those, where are they? There we go. Um, and I'm just going to do a small stitch to that mark. Then I'm going to do a large stitch. I think it's about five centimetres, five centimetres, five millimetres on this machine. And then the same small stitch at this side. Okay. And so I'm just doing a back stitch at the end of the small stitches just to hold it nice and firmly before I then change my stitch length as long as it will go. So yeah, it's five on this one. stitches to hold it and back on them and then to the end and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to press that open so that I can lay my zip on there and I would take you to my ironing board, but that part of my craft room is very, very, very untidy. So I've stitched that together. And I've, because I used a heat erasable pen, I've removed my mark. So I'm just going to put an inch and a half back in again. And I'm actually going to do it on each side with the tailor chalk, just so that it shows really, really well. I'm going to try and get that so that it needs to be closer to me so that you can see that. So inch and a half either side and that's where my zip's going to go to let me show that you that yep you can see those can't you and then all i'm going to do is lay my zip down um face first zip aside down and i'm just going to change onto my zipper foot and i'm going to stitch around my zip where i've marked it on the fabric there going to pin it in first put my zipper foot somewhere and we're good to go And then all we need to do is remove those tacking stitches from the centre. Just make sure that you take off the edge of your zip so that it's not going to get involved in our side seams of our flap. And then all we're going to do now is we're going to um, fold 
the two edges together and we're going to start, sew down each side and then we're going to turn it through And you are going to want to clip those two corners before you turn it through just to make it um, a neater corner. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it. And I think I'm going to just do a little top stitch all the way around as well, just to neaten it off. And you can then decide whether your zip wants to be on the inside of the flap or on the outside. My zip's not especially neat, I don't think. And I think for safety um, and security, I quite like the zip on the inside of the flap. We now need to pop our flap onto our outer fabric and our straps also. So it's going to look, a bag is going to look like this. I'll fold that over so you can see. The flap is going to sit over the folded picnic mat, a bit like that which means that the zip is going to be on the inside of my bag, needs to be showing on the outer fabric. I'll get that so that you can see that. So there's my zipper. And all I'm going to do to get it in the centre is I'm literally going to fold my bag in half and my bag, my flap in half. And I'm going to crease it. I might just put a little mark on there actually to make it really obvious. And then I'm going to fold my outer fabric in half as well. And I'm going to crease it again. Actually, I'm just going to do that again and make sure I've got sort of two creases there and I want to make sure it is in the centre, otherwise it won't hang correctly. There it is. So raw edges together, that wants to match up there. Now, you've got the strap as well, now the strap needs to be popped in here also. I'm just going to get rid of a few loose ties that I've got on here. Get rid of those threads. And your strap is also going to come from your flap. I show you oops, from this one. So this is your flap, and there's your strap, and that's lined up to the edge of the flap of your bag. So we're going to line it up to the edge. Now there's quite a lot of layers to go through here on your sewing machine. So I've got interfacing on all of these as well. Um, so just check, go nice and gently and make sure that um, if you need a walking foot on there, that you've got your walking foot or something on there. With your strap, you want to make sure that it isn't twisted. So it's going to come round and then it's going to go flat on there as well. So your sandwiches, your backing fabric, your strap, your flap. 
and then I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch across there within the seam allowance. So the seam allowance I'm using is about um, five eighths. So I'm going to stitch it about a quarter of an inch so that it's well in there. I'm just going to clip it, I think, with a couple of quilt clips just to keep it in place whilst I get to the machine. Because this is the bit I don't want it to move. Okay, and then we'll stitch that on. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch from the centre to one side and then the centre to the other side. So I've got less chance of that flap and those straps moving. Okay, so that's all in place now. And again, I'm just going to get rid of those loose threads so that they don't come to the wrong side of my seam. Then all I need to do is make sure that that flap and that handle stays within my bag now. So what I like to do is with this strap, what I don't want it doing is to get up here and into my seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it I'm going to pin it into the middle of my fabric just so that it's out of the way and can't get involved in any seam at all. Ouch, and that's my finger I've pinned as well, so that's not going to get involved in a seam either, is it? And then right sides together, I'm going to stitch all the way around the edge of my lining fabric and outer fabric make sure that I'm going to leave a gap for turning and I've got quite a lot going on to turn through here so I'm going to leave quite a substantial gap probably about um, six inches something like that when you've stitched all the way around and you've left your turning gap then what you're going to do again cut across your corners to reduce the bulk and then turn it through I like to use a paper crafting bone folder to turn. It's not got such a sharp point. So I'm less likely to go through the seam. Ooh, there's your pin that you held your strap down with. Things are looking up, zips on the inside. There we go. Straps on the outside, even better. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give it a jolly good press before we finish it off. And also I'm just gonna press the open edge in and then we're gonna to top stitch it all the way around. I've already top stitched the flap, remember? So all the way around here. And then that's gonna catch the open edge as well. So I'm just gonna head off to my iron. I'll be back in a mo. So now what we're going to need to do is we need to draw a line from the flap all the way down, which is going to be the fold line. Try not to pull that through the window. So we're just going to follow it all the way down. And 
And the same for this side. And I'm just going to stitch that um, just to help it to fold. So we've got our stitch lines there on our fold lines. I'm just going to go and give it a bit of a further iron and then we're ready to put our poppers or press studs on. So we're ready to put our press studs on. Now, I have put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight poppers on here. And you can see there, um, where they are on the inside as well. So you're going to begin folding the bag up and you're going to start on one side and you're going to put three down each side. Um, I did um, a bag earlier with just a couple on each side and I found that it wasn't quite sturdy enough to put a large water bottle in, which is what I was carrying at the time. So I've decided that three down each side. Um, I've got poppers, but press studs will do just as well, but just make sure they're nice and sturdy. Um, and I'll get on with this and I'll show you how I get on. And there we have it. So it's our stylish messenger picnic bag. And so we can then fill it with our favorite snacks maybe. Um, I found that a water bottle fits in there absolutely fine. We've got our zip there so that our valuables, phone, car keys, purse, all nice and safe and secure. And that's gonna pop down onto there as well. Nice long strap so it's going to go over the shoulder and then when you want to sit down and have your picnic or do your stitching, your embroidering in my case, then all you need to do is open it up, eat the crisps and you've got a really nice padded seat and what I do is I sit on this bit and then I just let this flap just hang down there and um, it's really nice and comfy and what's more it also goes with a little phone case that I've made and you can see the video for that here as well so thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed it um, do share your makes find me on Facebook Instagram Twitter and um, please do subscribe